Thanks to Robin Lehner and others, admitting to mental health issues is no longer a source of shame or embarrassment for NHL players. However, in bygone eras, our hockey heroes never showed fear, vulnerability, or weakness. With one major exception, Hockey Hall of Famer Frank Mahovlich, whose toxic relationship with his coach, Punch Imlach, twice drove him to serious nervous breakdowns. Known as the Big M, Frank Mahovlich was a talented and classy winger who scored 622 goals and won six Stanley Cups in 22 professional seasons. But despite his great success, Mahovlich struggled through the first half of his hockey life with emotional issues that resulted from high expectations. Frank was a shy and sensitive young man, ill-suited for the abuse he'd received from tyrannical Leafs coach Punch Imlach, oppressive team management, and fickle Toronto spectators. That Mahovlich managed to become a superstar while combating emotional pain and even depression is a testament to his once questioned character and will to succeed. Young Frank Mahovlich was a junior hockey prodigy with the fabled St. Mike's team in the Ontario Hockey Association. His play improved at a meteoric rate and he'd conclude his junior career by winning the Red Tilson Award as the OHA's top player after scoring 52 goals in just 49 games in 1956-57. In his first full season in the NHL, 57-58, his 20 goals and 36 points were enough to earn him the Calder Trophy as the top rookie in the ultra-competitive 16 NHL. But age 19, Mahoplich seemed on the cusp of a record-shattering career. After a pair of solid NHL seasons, Mahovlich exploded for 48 goals in 1960-61 while playing on a line with Red Kelly and Bob Nevin. Interestingly, he had 48 goals with 14 games remaining, but poised to break Rocky Richard's record of 50 goals, Mahovlich inexplicably fell into a malaise and failed to score for the rest of the season. When talk around Toronto could have been about the 23-year-old's magnificent season, it was instead all about his year-end slump. Frank led the Leafs with 33 goals in 1961-62, the final year of his contract. But he and Imlach differed sharply on Frank's next contract, with Imlach first reneging on a previously agreed upon handshake bonus of $1,000, and then offering Frank a paltry $1,000 raise from his $15,000 salary. Disgusted, Mahovlich refused to report and this became the talk of hockey. Attempting to seize on this impasse, Chicago Blackhawks owner Jim Norris allegedly offered team owner Harold Ballard $1 million for Mahovlich's rights. This was an unheard of sum at the time. After a media frenzy and outcry from the fans, the deal fell through, and the Maple Leafs immediately gave Mahovlich the raise he had sought, a boost from $15,000 per year to $25,000 per year. Embarrassed at losing this now public negotiation, Emlach and the Leafs proceeded to make Frank's working conditions as miserable as possible. The Leafs won the Stanley Cup for three consecutive seasons beginning in 1962. Mahovlich led the offense with over 30 goals per year, but he was constantly booed in front of the home crowd at Maple Leaf Gardens. For instance, when he failed to score a goal in the 1963 playoffs, he was booed during and after the game in which the Leafs clinched the Stanley Cup. The heckling even continued the next day at a reception in downtown Toronto for the Cup winners. Now, sparking the flames of Frank's detractors was Imlach, who constantly ridiculed his star left wing. Imlach often publicly questioned Frank's attitude, once stating that, quote, hockey is a streetcar named Desire, and Frank sometimes doesn't catch it. I think he took things rather seriously in that Leaf dressing room and he saw a lot of things he didn't like in there that bothered him, uh, it upset him, his nerves were frazzled. It was too bad in a way that he had to suffer through that. Um, who knows what the Big M might have been without all these, um, these issues he had to deal with with Imlac and, and others in the Leaf hierarchy. The, the pressure of playing in Toronto, the pressure of playing for Punch Imlach probably cost Frank Mahovlich a chance to enjoy as productive years as he could have. The mild-mannered Mahovlich responded to Imlach's constant berating and public ridicule by not reacting to it. 
But everyone has a breaking point. And Frank reached his in the second week of November 1964 when he was admitted to Toronto General Hospital and diagnosed with acute depression and exhaustion. Frank remained in the hospital under tight security for a month until he was deemed mentally healthy enough to return to hockey. When he did return to the team, the fans saluted him with a standing ovation and he finished the season as the Leafs' top scorer. Still, Frank's feud with Imla continued and his production dropped to just 18 goals in 1966-67, although he was a key player in the Leafs' unlikely 1967 Stanley Cup championship. Early in the following season, the Leafs played the Montreal Canadiens and emerged with a 5-1 win. Mohavlich was named one of the three stars of the game, but was booed by many of the Leafs' faithful. The next day, with the Leafs leaving on a trip to Detroit, Mohavlich got up from his seat on the train, told a teammate he was going home, and he left. He was soon, once again, under the care of Toronto General Hospital psychiatric staff. He was in a deep depression and according to many reports, had suffered a nervous breakdown. He'd miss 11 games while recovering. By this point, many in the press had written Frank off as a player who never fulfilled expectations and considered his career to be a disappointment. But Frank Mohablich was far from finished. He'd soon embark on a sensational second half of his career, but not with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Near the end of the 67-68 season, the Big M's fortunes would brighten when he was traded to the Detroit Red Wings. Great fella. Frank Mohavlich, how do you feel about the trade? Well, I, uh, right now I feel uh, that I'm uh, looking forward and uh, feel there's a challenge there and uh, try to uh, stand up to it. Frank, when did you find out about it? Uh, 8 o'clock this morning, somebody phoned me saying there was a rumor to that effect. And uh, that's the first I ever knew about uh, their talks. Freed from all the pressure and conflict in Toronto, Mahavlich experienced a rebirth in the Motor City. Feeds on the left wing to Mahavlich. Mahavlich stops, looks for somebody, moves in, shoots. Goal for Detroit. Considered somewhat aloof in Toronto, Mahavlich became more outgoing, joking with teammates and fans. He was put on a line with Gordie Howe and Alex Del Vecchio and had his best goal-scoring year in his first full season with the Wings. He scored 49 goals in 68-69. And as a bonus, he even gained his younger brother Peter as a teammate. A year and a half later, Frank was acquired by the Montreal Canadiens. And he continued to produce, especially in the postseason, where he helped lead the Canadiens to Stanley Cups in 1971 and 1973. In 1974, Frank jumped to the WHA and spent his final years in the Rebel League. In a 2021 interview with the Toronto Sun, Mohavlich reflected on his tumultuous time with Imlac and the Leafs. He recalled his last four seasons with the Leafs as, quote, the worst four years of my life. I wouldn't want anyone to experience that. It was a waste of time, end quote. Frank said, he was great for the first four years. And then, if you lost the game, if you did something wrong, he'd punish you. It became ridiculous after a while. The last four years were a disaster, really. Punch Imlac was a polarizing figure who demanded 100% obedience from his players. Many players loved him, but his autocratic style was too much for Frank. Nonetheless, together they won four Stanley Cups and are both enshrined in the Hockey Hall of Fame. More importantly, Senator Frank Mahovlich overcame his mental health challenges and serves as a great role model for today's players. Thanks for watching this episode of PHA TV. Please hit the subscribe button and never miss a classic hockey video.